you doing there folks? Baders here for another Top 10. So as some of you may have heard, some advertisers have boycotted YouTube as of late. And money's been a little tight. For instance, I had to sell a baby the other day just to buy food. Don't worry though, it wasn't my baby. I just found it in the park. How lucky was that? So with all that news coming out, we at Average Baiters, we want to be more advertiser friendly. So we're going to do our very best to try not to swear during this entire video. Because we know that big brands don't stand for that kind of fuckery. This week, we're going to be looking at some hidden gems in terms of mods for Fallout 4. Some of you may have heard of these mods before, but hopefully there's one or two on here that makes you go, Wow, I didn't know that was in the game. Remember, if you're playing on Xbox, keep your eyes open for this dirty nipple. And if you're playing on PlayStation, keep your face open for this fart tickler. As those are indicators that that mod featured is available on your console. Now make sure all your family pets are facing away from you. And let's get to average baiting, baby! At number 10, we have DC Glory by Slacks and Offside. Trying to convince someone that Diamond City is a great place to live is like trying to convince a stranger to look at your new machete when you're covered in blood. Hey there, buddy. You want to see my new machete? It's so sharp, I'll bet it could cut your head clean off. Hey, buddy, where are you going? Come on back now. Hey! Before this mod, Diamond City being a poopy place to live was one problem that couldn't be solved even with Kendall Jenner and a Pepsi. And we all know how effective carbonated acid and assless models are at solving society's problems! They're pretty good at it. This mod completely overhauls Diamond City from interiors to exteriors and attempts to make it look more presentable and inhabitable. For a place that is commonly referred to as the Jewel of the Commonwealth, it can be a bit lackluster when you get there and Ebola is sitting in the drinking water waiting to fuck you. This mod changes that and alters almost everything in Diamond City to the point where you can't even recognize it anymore. I mean, there still is a glimpse of the city it was, but it has been rebuilt and filled with all the amenities a great city would have. It even has its own basketball court so you can play basketball in a place that was originally designed to play baseball in. How cool is that? Everything that has been added to Diamond City is very immersive and fits in really well to the game as a whole. This mod really does change this city in a way that makes it a more accurate representation of the name Jewel of the Commonwealth. This makes it look more like a metropolis and less like a place that you would get tuberculosis. I rate this mod one adult who enjoys childish games. <laughs> I'm so wet! At the number 9 spot, we've got Auto Doors by Wenderer. Now, when it comes to settlement mods, this is one mod that gets overlooked a lot more than it should. This mod adds new automated doors, including a door closer, door sensor, a keypad panel, an emergency lockdown mechanism, and a proximity sensor. Each has a unique effect in the game and will take effect once placed in close proximity to a door. The door closing mechanism does exactly what you think and closes that door after a brief time of being opened. Now every door will be shut like that mystery room at the military base that says do not enter. Hey, I wonder what's in here. You're free, T-Run! So now it will look like your settlers actually care about their houses and shit because the doors will be shut rather than being left wide open for any mole rat to just strut in and fuck your wife while she's sleeping. God damn it, not again! Fuck! Now the door sensor is pretty sweet, it's basically like one of those automated doors at the grocery store that opens when you get close enough to them and then when you walk far enough away they close behind you. The keycard panels are also really cool because you can lock areas of your settlements that are only accessible in theory to people with those keycards. So you've got yellow for those caution zones, red for those restricted zones, and then blue for... blue zones I guess. The emergency lockdown mechanism is a big metal device that's supposed to be used on gates that require power, and will close and lock when the power is off and open when it's on. The proximity sensor works like an automatic switch, it turns on when hostile or all NPCs are in range, and turns off when they are not. So it's really good at keeping out unsavory characters. I rate this mod one kid with a really big bike helmet. Safety first, guys! At number 8, we've got Drop the Bomb by Monk55. This mod adds the ability to let your frustration out in the game without hitting Marcy Long, which is also an effective way of getting your frustration out in the game. I should know, I've done it. 
Now with this mod installed, when you don't have a weapon equipped and you toss a grenade, you will flip people off instead of throwing a grenade. This may seem like it doesn't have a ton of practical uses, but it really does. For example, you don't like that mailbox? Boom! Now it knows. Trash can Carla skanking up the joint? Got a prescription for that too. Boom! Take two a day and get a full night's rest. You want to make super mutants your bitch? One for you, one for you, and especially one for you. Or maybe you want to give Preston Garby a reason to cry himself to sleep every night. Hey Preston! Yeah, the Minutemen are a bunch of bitches! Take a look at this! Yeah! Uh-uh, uh-uh, why? Why? Oh, God. He's right. They fucking are a bunch of bitches. And if all that stuff doesn't float your water wings, then when you're bored, you can stick that lonely finger up your bum for some after bedtime fun. Oh yeah, I've done it. Really, the uses are endless with this mod. This mod is one that most people aren't aware even exists, which is truly a shame, because you really haven't lived until you've given someone the finger in Fallout 4. I rate this mod one guy who doesn't quite understand how a chair works. Wow, this thing's really neat and comfy. At number 7, we've got Workshop Interactive Objects by Aslam. Have you ever noticed that your settlers are a lazy bunch of freeloading turds that just wander around with no foreseeable objective? No? Just me then, huh? Well, don't worry, because this mod will have your settlers at least attempt to look busy, like a timid, physically abused worker person who doesn't like to get yelled at. This will make your settlement seem more alive by adding workshop items that your settlers can interact with. But that's not all, folks. No, no. Not only can your settlers interact with these objects, but you can also. So if you've ever wanted to take a shit in front of all your settlers and show them all how you never wipe your ass, well, you can do that with this mod installed. The fuck are you looking at, lady? Nothing to see here. Over 50 new interactive objects have been added to the miscellaneous furniture section of the workshop menu that both you and your settlers can interact with. These are not items that you have to tell your NPCs to use either. No, 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 no. They will use these items on their own as if they actually have double-digit IQs. Pretty realistic, isn't it? There's even a workout mat where you can go do push-ups and impress your female settlers. 99, 1,000, 1,001. I don't know if you just heard me over there or not, but, uh, I did like over a thousand push-ups. So you want to come back to my place and maybe spank me on my ass? Now your settlers will be able to interact with everything, including cars, motorcycles, trucks, fridges, and let's face it, who doesn't enjoy some good fridge action? I know I do! There's also Nuka-Cola machines, floors, walls, balconies, toilets, and much, much more. This is a great mod that adds a whole new element to your settlements and really brings them to life in the game. This is yet another hidden gem that I would highly recommend to anyone's playthrough of the game, especially if you like building your own settlements in Fallout 4. I rate this mod one monkey who found out Planet of the Apes isn't real. What do you mean it isn't real? We're stuck here? Is that what you're telling me? At number 6, we've got Army of Two Mass Collection by NC Ranger 5X. This mod adds the type of mass that would make all the kids at the local orphanage down the street from me poop in their panties if I jumped out of a closet wearing one of these bad boys at 3 a.m. Hypothetically speaking, that is, because I would never do something like that. Mr. Baders, when you jumped out of that closet, I was so scared I pooed in my little orphan jeans. Shut up, Billy! Shut up! I don't know how many of you guys and girls have played Army of Two, but really the best thing that game's got going for it are the sweet face cover and mask your co-op duo sports around when they're killing aliens or ninjas or whatever. I'm not really sure what they fight in that game. I only played the game for like 30 seconds, got one glimpse of the masks, and then came all over myself in the family room. And now my family can't look me in the eyes during dinner. Anyways, this mod adds the ballistic style mask from Army of Two to the world of Fallout. This mod really is a hidden gem as the quality and variety of these masks are super good. Like chocolate covered titties good. This mod author took a previous mod from Fallout 3 and improved it with improved meshes and textures as well as a flipped up version so you can play peekaboo with your settlers. <laughs> peekaboo motherfucker. This mod works with both male and female characters, but will make your character bald when you wear it unless you download the optional extra file to keep your hair on. So if you play as a female character, be prepared to be lonely as fuck. 
Now, if you're the type of person that doesn't like any clipping, then you should opt for the bald version, as the hair and shit can kind of clip through the mask sometimes, and sometimes the hoods. But if you're the type of person who wants to wear helmets and hoods and still have their hair while they do it, then you should opt for the additional download. Now, if you want to locate these masks, you can find them in the Sanctuary Root Cellar in a crate. So you'll be able to access these awesome identity concealers early on, and for free, which is goody goody gumdrops good. I rate this mod that face you make when you realize you have something delicious on your nose. Oh wow, a leftover breadcrumb. Delicious. At number five, we have Abduction by Lazy Girl. Have you ever just wanted to abduct somebody in real life? I know I have. I can't even imagine the mischief I'd get into if I owned my own flying saucer, but sadly I don't. Well, in real life, when you want to actually abduct somebody, there's a lot of red tape you have to deal with. Like learning how to persuade someone into your creepy van, or avoiding snoopy neighbors like that one kid with the giant binoculars. Yeah, I see you looking at me there, Billy. Alright? You pervert? Well, this mod, unlike real life, gives you all the fun parts of abducting someone without all the hassle. What more can you ask for? This mod allows you to subdue, abduct, and control encountered NPCs. The NPCs that are supported are gunners, raiders, settlers, mutants, dogs, and some assaultrons. Once you abduct them, you can either put them to work in your settlement, or you can have them follow you around like a bodyguard. Now, in order for this mod to work properly, you're first going to have to craft the abduction holotape at the chemistry station. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, oh no, more instructions. I just want to abduct people already. But instructions are important, people, okay? The last thing you want is to be rubbing chloroform on someone's face, only to remember that you left your ski mask at home. Those are amateur moves that'll get you pinched by the popo. Next thing you want to do is you want to use that holotape and click the start system. Then, once it resets, you'll have to go back in and click to add a perk. Once the perk is added, you'll be able to start abducting people. Yay. Just approach an NPC and aim at him or her, and you'll be able to abduct them. Just like this. No! Don't shoot! I'll do anything! Anything you say, huh? Well, I want you to suck on my wiener. Wait, what? It even puts a collar on their neck, which you can trigger in your pit boy to blow their head off. So run is not real in the cards, you feel me? After you kill someone, you can resurrect them and bring them back to life. Be careful though, because sometimes, all the king's horses and all the king's men can't put Mercy Long's head back together again. And instead of Marcy, you'll get this. <laughs> This is another hidden gem on the Nexus that seems to be overlooked. This is a great mod that adds to the game's dynamic and gives your character immersive tools to use during your playthrough. I'd highly recommend checking this mod out, as it's a lot of fun to use. I rate this mod one guy who thinks he's an ostrich. I feel safe in here. I feel like my head is protected and so my entire body's protected. At number 4, we have Exotic Enemies by Salvador 17 Fighting the same enemies all the time can get a little boring. But imagine getting into a fight with a bunch of super mutants and then out of nowhere, a chimpanzee dressed like a ninja jumps out of the bushes and kicks you right in the butt crack. That would be exciting and scary. Now every time you got in a fight, you would shit a little thinking, there's a crack kicking chimp hiding in the bushes somewhere. This mod does basically that minus the chimp that knows ninjutsu. Although that would be a truly amazing mod. With this mod installed pretty much anywhere you go in the game, there's a chance you'll be attacked by these new random enemies. Which is more terrifying than that one time I was on a plane, and the pilot came on the overhead speaker with an urgent announcement. Uh, attention all passengers, this is uh, your captain speaking. Uh, we have uh, handed out knives to all the uh, stewardesses, and they will uh, be going around now stabbing our randomly selected third class passengers. Uh, thank you for flying United Airlines. This mod adds a bunch of new enemies to the game to really spice things up on the battlefield. There are new tech raiders, federals, long oarsmen, renegades, metal men, scrappers, pirates, and reavers. They are all very immersive and fit into the game really well. They add a new dynamic to the commonwealth which really keeps things interesting in regards to the encounters that you will face in your travels of the world space. This mod uses unique level lists that will spawn these new enemies in places that would otherwise not be populated, which makes this mod even better. Also, all these new NPCs are hostile, so don't try to talk things out, because they will actually hit you right in the mouth. I rate this mod one seal who's really bad at telling secrets. I jerked off in the storage closet! Don't tell anyone, okay? At number three, we have Hookers of the Commonwealth by Recluse. This mod adds people you can pay to have sex with you in Fallout 4. This mod does require Fusion City Rising to work properly, but it's definitely worth it because of the prostitutes. 
Now, interacting with women of the night can be a little intimidating at first, which is why you can make small talk with them like you're not about to ask them to have sex with you for money. You can even put on a mask if you want, like I do when I go to the adult bookstore. I mean, there's just something about buying blow-up dolls in the dozens that feels a little less weird when you're wearing a mask, you know what I'm saying? With this mod installed, hookers will now be present in some of the major towns in the Commonwealth, including Good Neighbor, Diamond City, and Bunker Hill. Now, even though the mod author states there are hookers in Bunker Hill, they must have been hiding from me or something, because I searched that place with a fine-tuned penis for like 20 minutes and couldn't find shit. However, they are all over the place in Good Neighbor and Diamond City, so I ended up getting my fix. Thank God! This mod is a PG-13 version of prostitution in Fallout 4, meaning when you actually interact with a hooker and get her to give you some paid romance, it will just fade to black and when it lights up again, all the good stuff's gonna be over. You won't even get to see the money shot. There are some sex sounds though, which is good, because without those sex sounds, they could have just been faking it. Once you hook up with a hooker, you'll get a custom perk that grants you temporary buffs, and then you'll get a quick line of randomized dialogue from the prostitute herself before she wanders back to where you found her. Looking for more Johns, I suspect. This is a great mod for lonely people who will pay to have sex in a video game. So it's basically like the perfect mod for me. I would recommend this mod to anyone who has some extra caps and is feeling a little horny. I rate this mod one time traveler who's from 2000 years in the future. Holy shit, you guys still got trees? That's awesome. At number two, we've got Usable Cigarettes by Wenderer. This is a mod that some of you may have actually heard of before, but we still included it on this week's list because we thought it was one of those hidden gems on the Nexus that doesn't get a lot of attention. Now, in a place where you've got mutated people and radiated animals that want to kill your face, it's safe to say that the FDA isn't putting warning labels on shit. Before this mod, you could find cigarettes all over the Commonwealth, but your character had the common sense not to start up a bad habit like smoking when there's so many other things that could kill you. Last thing you want to do is get all strung out needing a cigarette, then you'll start poking around Deathclaw Caves because you heard there was an entire carton of Rollies in there. Now, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I just sit there and stare at Trash Can Carla and think to myself, how can I be more like that? Well, now you can light up Trash Can Carla style with this mod installed. Now, you will need a lighter and cigarettes, but after that, you'll be able to smoke your health away, no problem. When you are smoking, this mod will force you into third-person view in order for the animation to work. Don't worry, though, it will switch you back when you're done sucking on that sweet stick of death. Smoking does have some side effects, though. It grants you plus one charisma for 60 seconds, plus 5% to your aiming stability for one hour, and if your health is below 20%, it will slowly restore it. So basically, this mod is the opposite of the real-life side effects of smoking. Now, there is a 20% chance that you will get addicted to smoking, which is pretty realistic, and if you do get addicted, you'll have minus one to charisma, because you'll be offering HJs for your next fix, and minus one to endurance, because you'll be coughing up phlegm to escape even the slowest of enemies. I rate this mod one guy who's really upset because he can't whistle. At number one, we have Outfit Switcher by Registrator2000. Outfits can really define you as a person. For instance, if you want to look employed, then just wear a Walmart vest around. Now people will think you have a job, even if you don't. If you want to look intelligent, then just wear a sign that says, I'm smart as fuck. People usually believe signs. I know I do. And if you want to look crazy, just wear someone else's face. Guaranteed no one's going to sit next to you on the bus if you're wearing the bus driver's face. This mod adds the ability, nay the privilege, to change your outfit on the fly quickly and efficiently. I know what you're thinking, why would I need to change my outfit quickly? Well, if you've ever been caught jerking off in a Sunday dress, then you know how important it is to change your outfit fast. This mod doesn't just make switching outfits possible, it also makes it easy. All you have to do is put the outfit on that you want to save, then use the options in your pit boy to save that outfit under one of the loadouts. After the outfit is saved, you can hotkey the loadout option and switch to it easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now you'll be able to express yourself in all sorts of ways with this mod installed, letting people know how you really feel at that very moment. I feel sexy. This mod is great if you want to be sneaky, you can run around in some light stealthy gear, and if you get caught being sneaky, then you can switch on the fly to some more armored attire. You can save up to 20 different outfits, so you'll have lots of variety to choose from. This hidden gem is truly an amazing mod that should have been in the game to begin with. I love to switch up my outfit in Fallout 4, and this makes that not only an option, but even a tactic you can use in the game. This is definitely a must-have mod for anyone's playthrough of Fallout 4. I rate this mod one very untrusting face at the local water park. 
Come on in, guys. The water's fine. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching, folks. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then go ahead and fuck that subscribe button like an inflatable doll with no air in it. Also, for those of you who use Patreon, we recently started up an account on there so we can be independent of advertisers and make content the way you guys want it. Check us out on there if you'd like to. If not, no worries. We still appreciate you and your sexy butt cheeks. And hope to see y'all again next time for another Top 10!